Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Chainlink and central banking digital currencies. After that, we're going to have a look at Ethereum staking and a few other stuff. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. So, the first thing that I do briefly want to discuss is today we've had another big dip in the market. All of the cryptos have gone down about another 10%. Now, personally, I'm not sure when this downtrend is going to end. I really can't tell. So essentially, my strategy is just to continue dollar cost averaging and buying crypto. I'll buy some Ethereum and Chainlink today, and then I'll buy some Ethereum and Chainlink in a couple more days. Just keep dollar cost averaging down, and this is what I like to do during dips. Anyways, let's get into some of the long-term fundamentals, because we do know over the long term, the fundamentals are going to be what impacts the price the most. Now, Chainlink God did a very interesting post, and in this post he talked about how the European Bank are actually planning on establishing a digital euro, and how Chainlink and CCIP can enable the transfer of CBDCs across blockchains, potentially bringing trillions of dollars into the DeFi economy. Now, essentially, Chainlink God linked a post, and this post was by Lakestar. Essentially, what Lakestar are doing is Lakestar are recommending to the European Central Bank how they should use Chainlink. Back in July, the European Central Bank announced that they are planning on making a CBDC. Now, a CBD stands for a Central Banking Digital Currency. Essentially, a Central Banking Digital Currency is a cryptocurrency, however, the cryptocurrency is controlled by a central bank, so it's a centralized cryptocurrency, and the point of these cryptocurrencies are essentially to replace the dollar. What the European Union will do is they will just make a digital euro and replace this with the original euro. Of course, the price of the digital euro will be exactly the same as the price of the original euro, and this will essentially just act as a replacement. Now, the reason that they are probably going to want to do this, and every bank in the world is considering CBDCs, is essentially because it's a lot easier to use cryptocurrencies for money. It's a lot easier to issue money over time through cryptocurrency, it's a lot more transparent, you can track the currency wherever it goes, and a lot of big banks are doing this. China is already nearly done developing their digital yuan, and a lot of other countries are jumping on board and they're starting to develop CBDCs. Of course, we do know the European Union have already said that they are going to be making the euro digital over the years. Now, Lakestar essentially recommended a whole range of things Europe could do with their digital euro, and we'll jump into what some of that stuff is right now. Now, essentially, the individuals at Lakestar were in a discussion with Sergei Nazarov about what they can do with Europe's CBDC. Now, what Sergei Nazarov said is very interesting. Sergei Nazarov essentially said that a digital euro presents a significant opportunity to bridge the traditional financial and monetary systems of today with the growing DeFi economy and the blockchain networks it operates on. Sergei Nazarov then went on to say that the digital euro could essentially use Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol. Now, what this would essentially do is individuals who are holding the digital euro would be able to use that digital euro on a range of different networks. They'd be able to go onto the Ethereum network and use their digital euro, they'd be able to go onto the Avalanche network, and they'd essentially be able to use their digital dollars across all of the different cryptocurrency networks. Of course, this is made possible through Chainlink. This is because Chainlink have CCIP, and this essentially allows this asset to go through all of the different chains and be used on all of these different chains. Now, in my opinion, this is absolutely huge. And if we see this in the future, there's going to be a lot more use of layer ones and a lot more value added to Chainlink. Let's use a simple example to illustrate how big this is. Let's say 10 years down the track, the United States have developed a CBDC. Now, this CBDC is essentially the US dollar, so it is just USD. However, it is now on the blockchain. Now, let's say that Matt wants to use this USD. 
Matt wants to buy, let's say, an NFT off the Ethereum blockchain. Instead of converting this USD into something else on the Ethereum blockchain and buying it, Matt can directly take his money and buy something on Ethereum. Now, let's say that Matt wants to do a bit of yield farming on Avalanche. Matt wants to lend some money and he wants to lend it to people to earn some interest on Avalanche. All Matt needs to do is take his US dollars out of the bank and use it on Avalanche. Of course, this is all enabled by Chainlink. Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol will allow Matt to directly take this asset, his USD, onto these other chains. And the way this is made possible is USD will eventually be a CBDC and a cryptocurrency. Now, if Matt wanted to do something on the Ethereum blockchain right now, what he'd need to do is he would need to convert his USD into USDC. USDC is a coin that tracks the US dollar and it's issued on the Ethereum blockchain. However, this is one extra step and one extra step is going to be very annoying in the future and it will hinder a lot of people from using the blockchain. So, what Chainlink and what Sergey Nazarov are essentially proposing is they're proposing that these countries make their own CBDCs and these CBDCs can be used on all of the different blockchains. If Matt wants to execute a smart contract on Ethereum, he can just simply use his money that's in the bank. He won't need to do anything else and this money will be able to circulate through all of cryptocurrency. This would be absolutely huge. This would add so much more value to Layer 1s and so much value value to Chainlink because Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol allows all of these different assets to communicate with different chains and everything would go very well for our investments here. So, in my opinion, I do think this is something that will likely happen into the near future. You must remember, this is only a recommendation by Sergei Nazarov. The European Bank have not taken this on board yet, and they may not take it on board in the near future. However, I think that this is a very, very good recommendation, and I do believe we will see things playing like, out like this into the near future. We do know that nearly every bank in the world is going to transition to cryptocurrency and CBDCs, 80% of banks are considering it right now, and this will turn to 100% in the next couple of years. So, overall, that's my opinions on the new Chainlink news that just came out. Now, the next big bit of news is that regulation is getting worse and worse for crypto right now. Brian Armstrong made a little bit of a tweet, and Brian Armstrong is the CEO of Coinbase. What Brian Armstrong and Coinbase were trying to do is they made it so if you put US dollars into your Coinbase account, so you just deposit money into your Coinbase account, then you get 4% interest every year on that. Now, you might be wondering, how do you get 4% interest on your dollars? Well, what Coinbase do is Coinbase go out, they take those US dollars, turn it into USDC, and they yield farm it. They yield farm that money to get you interest. Coinbase will be able to get essentially 8%, they'll keep 4% for themselves and give 4% off to you. So, this is the power of DeFi and the power of cryptocurrency. The yields are a lot better because middlemen aren't in there taking out so much money and cryptocurrency businesses can offer a lot more competitive yields. Now, the reason that Coinbase was shut down on this was essentially because the big banks offer individuals 0.01% for keeping dollars in their bank account. That's right, the banks essentially offer no money whatsoever to individuals. Now, cryptocurrency essentially makes it a lot more competitive and it's really hurting these banks if it takes off. So Coinbase was shut down in doing this and they are currently arguing in the courts with US politicians. So, in my opinion, this is pretty annoying and I do think Coinbase should be allowed to do this and I think we really do need to fight regulation. Overall, I don't think regulation will be a long-term problem. Raoul Paul himself has said regulation is all just noise in the short term and it will work itself out in the long term. Now, at the start of the video, you may remember that I had a bit of a meme up and this meme says, and then we told them that we were protecting investors with a bunch of politicians laughing. And I do believe that this is what a lot of politicians are saying. The SEC is saying they're regulating crypto to protect investors. However, the SEC's definition of protecting investors is barring people from getting good yields, 
preventing token airdrops and doing a range of other stuff to stop people from getting free money. They're stopping people financially freeing themselves and using DeFi away from the banks. So this is not protecting investors and I do find it quite ironic. However, in the long term, I do think a lot of regulation will work itself out. The last thing that I wanted to discuss in this video is something about Ethereum staking. Now, Rocket Pool is a decentralized Ethereum 2.0 staking as a service system. This means that if you give your Ethereum to Rocket Pool, they will essentially stake the Ethereum to you and give you back Ethereum in return. This allows individuals to earn about 5% every year. Now, Rocket Pool is entirely decentralized. This means it's controlled by no intermediaries and not much can go wrong whatsoever, which is really good. Now, what Rocket Pool have done is they've announced when they are deploying to Mainnet. Rocket Pool have said that they will be live on the 6th of October. So Rocket Pool will be live in just under one month. Now, the second Rocket Pool goes live, I will probably be staking some of my Ethereum with Rocket Pool. And what Rocket Pool do is they allow individuals with less than 32 ETH to stake their Ethereum. Now, if you have more than 32 ETH, you're allowed to run your own validator node. But if you don't have that much, you cannot run your own validator. Of course, what Rocket Pool are trying to do is they're allowing anyone with over $100 in Ethereum to stake their Ethereum in a fully decentralized way. I can't wait for this and I think this is going to be very good and very great for Ethereum. Anyway, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow my Twitter account and join the Discord channel, and thanks for watching the video.